I'm reading from the authorized version of the scriptures from the book of Galatians chapter 2. The scriptures that we will be looking at today. I encourage you to get an actual copy of the authorized version of the scriptures, commonly referred to as the King James Version. And please follow me along, word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures we are going to be looking at. Um, the scriptures that we are going to be looking at today are not going to be flashed at you, and only for a few moments, so you can't comprehend or ingest what has been flashed onto you. Okay? This video is a rebuke to this uh, fine young man, Mark the Messenger. And the name is kind of appropriate because this dear young man is an absolute mess, doctrinally. This young man is a heretic. He is a Judaizer wanting to bring people back under the law, and he is damning people to hell. Okay? Um, just to, and this, brethren, people, a channel like this is the sign of the times. And this is a warning unto all of you, this video. We're going to, uh, through the scriptures, debunk everything, not everything, but pretty much everything, the big main points of a video that we're going to watch that this young man says, okay? But reading from Galatians chapter 2 to begin, please follow me along. Word for word, verse by verse. Follow me along in the scriptures. Okay? Check me out. Check me out. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Check me out. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Check me out. Okay? Galatians chapter 2, verses 1, on to verse 5. Then 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. It's talking about Acts chapter 15, okay? Which we are going to be looking at today to refute this young man, okay? But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. Being circumcised, going back under the law. Most people here in America and in other nations, yes, most of the men are circumcised, yes. Okay, but see, within Scripture, teaching people, telling them that they have to be circumcised and keep the law of Moses to be saved, stay saved, to be right with Christ today, that's heresy, that is not true, and that's something that this young man teaches, and it's a lie. Uh, in one of the previous videos, um, I was accused by a God-fearing man of um, speaking, teaching words to no profit. Um, you are going to see an, a perfect example of the true scriptural interpretation and definition of someone who is speaking words to no profit. This mark the mess. Okay? But let's continue here. Okay? And that because of false brethren... False brethren, unawares, brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. And also, too, another one, and um, th this young man is an absolute mess. He is an absolute mess, okay? Um, this young man had, has no idea what it is to di rightly divide the word of truth. And you're going to see that. He, qu he, he quotes just a piece of 2 Timothy 2.15, but he doesn't continue with it. Why is that? Because he's lying to you and he's not rightly dividing the word of truth. But uh, Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24, which is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble, okay, which is for the Jews, the true Hebrews, this young man obviously is of the black Hebrew Israelite camp. And there will be two, a two-part video in the description box of this video where we go through the scriptures and we determine what is a Jew scripturally. Okay? 
Mark? That's your name, son? You're a liar. You're not a Hebrew. It's impossible. You are not a Hebrew. I, you are a Hamite. It's impossible for me to be a Hebrew. I am of Japheth, okay? You are not a Hebrew. You could be a Jew, meaning that you want to keep the law. But see, in Scripture, when it talks about being a Jew, it's a reference onto the Hebraic people. The Hebraic people of the direct descended line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Of Shem. You are not of Shem, young man. You're a liar. You are not a Hebrew. And any of you people, black Hebrew Israelites, you are not Hebrews. It's impossible. You are Hamites. It is impossible for you to be a Hebrew. As it is impossible for me of Japheth to be a Hebrew. Okay? You can put yourself under the law. Sure. But you are not a Hebrew. You are not of the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? Hey, any? I know it's very difficult to witness onto the black Hebrew Israelite people. It really is. It's very difficult. But if you are curious... There will be two videos in the description box. What is a Jew? I challenge you to watch that. To watch both of them. Okay? All right? But, Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 and 5. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. I am Christ. The name, the word Christ, means anointed one. Okay, and you look here in the playlist. Oh boy, chosen ones. And you're going to see in this video, he, uh, he teaches a form of Calvinism. Elect and non-elect. Uh, if you're chosen, you'll get it. If you're not chosen, well, whatever. You'll see that that's almost a verbatim quote. Uh, no pride here, is there, huh? Yeah. And, and on this, look look at uh, look at this. Uh, you got his uh, chosen ones, of course, pro, uh, most likely referencing that he is a black Hebrew Israelite. You're not a Hebrew, young man. You're a liar. You are not a Hebrew. You're a liar. Okay, first thing wrong with you. Self improvement. Warning there. And this. Semen retention, retention, no fap. 89 videos, 37 and 35, and most of them is on semen retention. Now, scripturally, there's nothing wrong about talking about the sin of masturbation. And, okay, some would like to talk about, well, what about the marriage bed? Whatever, okay, whatever. The marriage bed is undefiled between a man and a wife, okay. But there's nothing wrong talking about the sin of masturbation. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay? We're leaving out the context of marriage because obviously that's not what he's referring to. But that many of his videos? Hmm. Hmm. But I also want to show you something that is very disturbing. Okay? Now this young man gets donations. And I want to show you this because this is very... This is... A, this tells you, this is telling you something. This man is not saved. This guy is a deceiver. He is of the devil. He is leading many people to hell. Okay? But check out his community. Okay? All right? Now, there he's got 100,000 subscribers. No boasting there of the amount of subscribers he has. No boasting there. Uh, no, no pride there. Yeah? Okay? And this young man seems to use the scriptures. Which is why I'm going to be a little bit more harsh on him. Okay? But I want to show you this. Okay, Mark the Messenger. Okay, come on, keep you, you, You're going to... Okay, where is that? Reading from the authorized version of the Scriptures in Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 4. Okay? <laughs> All right. Shout out to Charles White for supporting my ministry. And also Adarius Lewis, Nate, Palmer Williams, and Braxton Mills. Much appreciated. God bless you all. Charles White. Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 4. 
Take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Okay? Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Uh, Mr. Charles White, you have your reward. This young man does not serve the Lord Jesus Christ, my God, my Father. He serves Satan. Okay? You have your reward for your gift that you have given this young man. You have the praises of men. Okay? You have your reward. This, see, if anyone was truly saved, born again, converted of the church of God, right away, this, ought to, this alone ought to be like, whoa, wait, let me give you an example. How many of you people would jump on me if I did something like this? Never, never mind me mentioning his holiness, okay? But if I did something like this, yeah, you do, this, this is wicked. Mr. Charles White, you poor man, you have your reward. Oh, well, God bless me. Oh, the little G God of this world blessed you, sir. Not the God of the scriptures. Okay? Take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory of man. People, come on. Okay? <laughs> Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest, thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret, secret himself shall reward thee And this is for the kingdom of heaven. This isn't even doctrine for us today. But see, this does not change within the dispensations. Dispensations. Those of you who follow this man, you might, what's that? Rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? It's, it's called rightly dividing the word of truth. You, you know what this young man talks about uh, quite a bit about, you know, he says, he says that I think twice in the video that we're going to be looking at in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to shew thyself approved. That's where he stops, okay? That's where he stops. You're going to see it. Oh, he'll put the little scripture verse up there only for a moment. with Just, just for a moment and then go on and keep on rattling on. This young man, the way he speaks, da, 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 reminds me a lot of Jacob Thompson. Just da, 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 you know? Very, very, yeah. Uh, it's hard to keep up with him. And someone who is that hard to keep up with uh, leaves open many ways for them to deceive you. Okay? But 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to shew thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth, being dispensational, okay? Which is, this young man is not. Hence, God is ashamed of this young man. Young man, Mark, you watching me? God, the true God of the scriptures, who you are not serving, is ashamed of you. Because you're not rightly dividing the word of truth, okay? You're not. You're lost, son. And you're condemning and damning people to hell. You're not a Hebrew, okay? You're lost. And hopefully, well, you've got a successful business here. Look at, look at this. Look at this. Okay? This. Anyway. <laughs> now, we are going to get to one of this young man's videos. And, yeah, and those of you of the Church of God, uh, Church of the Living God, inaccurately referred to as Christians, okay? The Christian, that is a term given to us uh, by the world. Those are not words to no profit, my dear friend, okay? We are going to see true words to no profit spoken by a false prophet, a prophet of Satan, okay? But uh, as you're looking at this, you might as... Uh, it, and this young man has the same almost 
deer in the headlights look in all every single one of his videos. I, I mean, okay, there, there's one he's smiling. Okay, there, there, that's good. He's smiling in one. Okay, and there's one that's different. And there's one that's different. There's one that's different. Okay, um, but he look. He's got this same look in ev virtually all of these, all of his videos, and all of his videos. And thus far, I have not seen any true meat. <coughs> but uh, just under that 15 minute thing. But this right here, this is the video. Seven false teachings Christians must avoid. Okay, so this is the video we're going to be looking at. When I became governor, I knew we needed to fix our roads. So I got Republicans and Democrats together to get the job done. The Rebuild Illinois plan will help build and this is the governor of my and state. bridges across the state. And together, you wonder we'll why Illinois, Illinois is, I call it Illinois. The hand pen, okay. But I'm worse at okay, that. Monetized. Getting money from the Jesuits from Google. Yeah. Yeah. Sleeping with no caffeine, the mud water rest blend combines rooibos masala chai. With All right. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Mark the messenger. Back on our video. This one's going to be about seven. See, peace and blessings. Like, like Jacob Thompson. Ba, 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 ba. Okay. <laughs> and you're going to see this throughout the video. He'll put the scriptures up just for a moment, okay? Yes, you can do like this and pause them, but then he keeps... Okay? Just because he puts it up there, but he doesn't expound on anything, see? But let's, let's, let's go. Teachings you must avoid. I'm a Christian, so I'm going to go over all the lies that they taught us in Christianity. And I fell for some of these lies too. I'll go over which ones I fell over. And uh, yeah, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Also, if this video, if this video triggers you, the reason why it's going to trigger you is because you have the spirit of error in you. All right, even the spirit of truth, who the world can. What he said: If this video triggers you, it's because you have the spirit of error. What he's saying is: If you disagree with me or want to prove me wrong, you're you're not saved yourself. See what he's doing? See what he's doing? Okay, but see again that da, 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 talks way way too fast. Okay, hence da, 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 leaving open for number one suggestion and also deceit. Okay, it's it's almost as if this young man forgot to take his Ritalin. Okay, so let's continue. Proceed because it see him not, neither know him, but you know him, and he dwells within you. Leave verses all throughout this whole video. So I know this but video you is don't expound because it's a spirit of error. A spiritual man judges all things. Okay. Number one is once saved, always saved. I know. <laughs> and of course, goes right for the thing. Now here, I, I paused it prematurely, but listen to what he says. Okay. And I'm here's where I'm going to get a little harsh. Okay. How many dwells within you? Leave verses all throughout this whole video. So I know this video is going to trigger people because it's a spirit of error. A spiritual man judges all things. You have the okay. spirit of error. Number one so. is once saved, always saved. I never believe this because it just, I don't believe in that. It's, to me, it doesn't make no sense. If you love God, if you love Christ. This never set right with me. I don't believe in that. It never set right with me. Um, young man, to hell with what you think. What saith the scriptures? Okay? To hell with what you... I, it doesn't seem right. It doesn't fit right with me. Okay? It doesn't fit right with me. To hell with what we think. What saith the scriptures? What saith the scriptures? Okay? Let, let's, let's let this man ramble on a little bit. Okay? Don't worry. We're going to get into plenty of scriptures. But let's let him ramble on. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love him, you're not gonna you're gonna change. You're gonna repent. Change, repent, same thing. So all this once saved, always saved. We could we could go back to our vomit. We could just sin, sin, and it doesn't matter because he loves us. Uh John 3 16. That's that's false, guys. That once saved, always saved is like is like the devil tempting Eve again. Like, oh if you if you I know she didn't bite the apple, I know it's not like that, but 
I'm just saying, for example, that's what they taught us in the church. Like she bit the apple, which the, the apple's not even mentioned in the Bible. But let's just say Satan's tempting Eve. Oh, if you do this, you won't die. Everything will be good. It's, just, it's just like the same thing as once saved, always saved. If you keep sinning, nothing will happen to you. You, you know, you're saved by grace. All right, but the Bible. Okay, that's enough. Now, see what he's doing is is saying that if you're a saved person, then you're going to stop sinning. And he's going to be like, well, no, we still still sin and stuff like that. But what he's doing is he's blurring the line, saying that someone who is truly saved, born again, converted, isn't going to be a habitual sinner. Well, if you read the scriptures in First and Second Corinthians, we know that is not true. Okay, But first of all, what this young man's, what his, his big problem is, is that he's not rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, now, when did the New Testament begin? Most people, most of you who are probably disciples of this man, probably say with the birth of Jesus. No, sir. No, sir. No. When did the New Testament begin? Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. The book of the Hebrews, which is written for the Hebrews. The book of Hebrews and the book of James are epistles for the Jews, the Hebrews. For during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay, doctrinally not aimed at us. There are doctrines in Hebrews and in James that does cross dispensational lines. But for the majority, the book of Hebrews and the book of James are written for the Jewish people, the true Hebrews, which you are not, son, are written for the Hebrews during the time of Jacob's trouble when they come unto their Messiah, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay? That's why Hebrews is written in this fashion that it is. It is. And when you look in the book of James, written onto the 12 tribes scattered abroad, th these, are, these two epistles in the New Testament are written for the Hebrew Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. And when you get people like this who try to take this and turn them into doctrine for today, oh boy, you make a mess of things. But, when did the New Testament begin? Hebrews chapter 9, verses 13 on to verse 17. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit, capital S, offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works hmm. to serve the living God. Dead works. That's a reference onto the law. Oh, oh don't get ahead of me now. Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, I hope you got the scriptures. We, we got a lot of verses we're going through today. But let's continue. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. Not covenant. Oh, yes, he is of the new covenant, but there's a difference between covenant and testament. They don't mean the same thing. More coming on that in a video here in the near future. Okay, But it says, and the Bibles, which this is not, yeah, it says Holy Bible, but you don't judge a book by its cover. Okay, But the Bibles, such as the NIV and stuff like that, they usually put in new covenant. There's a difference between covenant and testament, just so you know. Okay. And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal life, uh, of eternal inheritance, excuse me. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. The death of the testator. And who is the testator? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? Verse 17. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. You know how Moses died before the children of Israel went, into, uh, went to conquer the po uh, promised land by Joshua and whatnot? Okay? Our Lord Jesus Christ... His death brought in the New Testament. See, while our Lord Jesus Christ was alive on the earth the first time, 
Doctrinally, it was under the law because the perfect sacrifice for sins had not been yet made yet. But when he died, buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, shed his blood on the cross. When he died, that brought in the New Testament. Hence, that brought in this dispensation, which we are right in right now. This young man, young man, you are, you know that verse, uh, 2 Timothy 2, 15, study to show yourself approved unto God, that you be a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. See, this young man is taking the whole of scripture and blending it together into a soup and making it a mess. He's Mark the mess. Okay? You're Mark the mess. You're making a mess out of scripture. God is ashamed of you. The New Testament, son, and all of you who watch this, did not begin with the birth of Jesus. It began with the death of Jesus. That's when the New Testament, this current dispensation, which we are in the time of the Gentiles, he is a Gentile. You are not a Hebrew. The Lord rebuke you, son. Woe unto you who call yourselves Jews, and you are not. Okay. Again, you got a question about what is a Jew? Do you have the stones to check out the two videos, huh? I dare you to. I dare you to. Okay? But you're calling yourself a, a Hebrew, a Jew? You need to be careful, son. You need to be very careful. Now, what say the scriptures? Go to Ephesians. Now, those of you who are saved, born again, converted of the church of God, church of the living God, you know this. But uh, th this man's channel name is going to be in the title of this video. So, like... The majority of people who are going to see this and attack this are not going to be saved and going to be this man's disciples. So bear with me. What saith the scriptures? About once saved, always saved. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 11 on to verse 14. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel, good news, of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed, sealed, with that Holy Spirit of promise. And the Lord is that Spirit. Okay? One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. The Trinity... <laughs> Trinity is satanic, okay? Verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, the catching away of the body of Christ, okay? As he refer makes a reference to the pre-tribulation, rapture, rapture is not in the scripture, okay? It's the redemption of the purchased possession, the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, Okay? We are sealed. Those of us who are truly saved, we are sealed. Once saved, always saved. Until the redemption of the purchased possession onto the praise of his glory. Okay? All right? Now, go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 24 on to verse 30. Now, what he's saying is, well, you know, once saved, always saved is a lie because God's not going to be okay with a habitual sin. You're right. You're right. If we sin willfully, and, he, and you can see he's taking out of context Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, which is for the time of Jacob's trouble where it is faith and works and no one is eternally secure during the time of Jacob's trouble except for the 144,000 Jews, eternal security is not during that time, the time of Jacob's trouble. you got to rightly divide the word of truth, son, or you're, you're making a fool out of yourself, son. You, you, you're making yourself look stupid. You really are. You really are. You're not rightly dividing the word of truth. You're making a mess of things, son. Please repent. Please repent, okay? But Matthew, uh, Matthew, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 24 on to verse 30. Uh, let's read verses 23 on to verse 30. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, 
And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. A new creature, okay? Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. What does this mean? What does this mean? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Please follow me along. Okay? Please follow me along. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 11 on to verse 17. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 11 on to verse 17. Now, see, what he's saying is, well, once saved, always saved, must not be true, because there is such a thing as those who are saved who decide to ignore the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit and to live in sin. See, God is not forcing a gun at your head, making you adhere to the scriptures to live a life according to the scriptures. Neither is Satan holding a gun at your head, forcing you to live contrary to the scriptures. See, that's that thing of free will. We have to make the right choices in our lives as the church of the living God. Because if you read First and Second Corinthians in its totality, uh, yeah, there are those of the church of the living God who were not walking according to the scriptures and their whole... See, there are those who are saved, who live like the devil, but they're going to be in heaven. But see, the consequences that in heaven... The Lord is going to be ashamed of them for eternity. Okay? See, when you are truly saved, you are once saved, always saved. Or else what we just saw is a lie. Okay? Because, see, son, and see, your, your work's salvation. You're saying people got to keep the Ten Commandments, and we can't. Okay? Nobody could. Okay? We'll, we'll get to that to refute you. But, see, you saying that you're saved, you're staying saved by you keeping the law, so your salvation is your salvation. You can't lose what isn't yours. True salvation is the gift of God. But see, if you're keeping it by keeping the law, then it is your salvation. See, that's the angle that this heretic is coming from. But on that, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 11 on to verse 17. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Gold, silver, precious stones can survive fire. They'll melt eventually, uh, uh, like precious stone, uh, gold and silver, silver will melt eventually, yes. But they will initially abide, abide the fire. Wood, hay, stubble, get burned up just like that, see. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, Christ, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it. And our Lord Jesus Christ is the day star. Okay? Because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Abide. Abide the fire, such as gold, silver, precious stones. Okay? He shall receive a reward. Your reward's in heaven. Okay? Verse 15. If any man's work shall be burned, wood, hay, stubble. Okay? He shall suffer loss. No rewards. But he himself shall be saved. Yet so as by fire. And that's not talking about 
to go to satanic Catholic purgatory, okay? See, our works are going to be tried for our rewards at the judgment seat of Christ, okay? There are those out there who are truly saved, and God has given them over to uh, the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus, who are of no use to the kingdom, and who shame him with every single breath. But, and his argument is like, well, how can they be saved? Um, if you come to the Lord on his terms, broken of your self-righteousness, which this young man obviously has not been, have contrition, godly sorrow, it's your fault, you can't blame society. You can't blame the white man. You can't blame the black man. No. You can only blame yourself. Okay? It's your fault. And having the fear of the Lord that unless he save you, you're going to hell. And you cry out to him, call upon his name, and that he may save you. If you come to him on his terms and he save you, you're once saved, always saved, son. Your sin cannot undo that seal until the day of redemption or else God is a liar. But what about those who are of the church of the living God who live in habitual sin? Who, who live well, every sin, young man, every sin is willful. Okay? Every sin is willful. There is no oopsie sin. No, every sin is willful. Okay? Well, what about if it was unawares? Well, you will be known, made known about it. But like, for example, uh, is it an accidental sin that you decide to look at porn? Hmm? Is it an accidental sin that you decide to smoke a cigarette to get drunk? Hmm? Hmm? Is it an accidental sin that you decide to play a video game? Is it an accidental sin that you go and uh, commit fornication? Huh? Is it an accidental sin that you put something before? No. 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 But let's continue. Okay? Verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you, and the Lord is that Spirit, Jesus Christ God our Father? If any man... Don't look at me. Look at the Scripture. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Christ dwells within you, hence your body is holy. So if any man, your enemy without, or you yourself, your own worst enemy, destroy, uh, defile the temple of God, him will God destroy. Okay? So what, what, does this, what does this mean? You go to 1 Corinthians now, chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 5. Here's what God does to those who are truly saved of the church of God who will not repent of their sins. Okay? We sin every day. There is no such thing as sinless perfection. But if there is someone who has a sin that they just won't give up, because remember, God isn't forcing you to do that. Okay? All right? Here's what God does to those who refuse to repent of their little pet sins. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 under verse 5. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. Ew. His stepmother. Yeah. You're puffed up. And have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily as absent in body but present in spirit have judged already as though I were a present concerning him that hath so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. What does that mean? When you are once saved, truly saved, this man was saved, okay? But he was committing fornication with his father's wife. A grotesque sin, but he was a saved man. So Paul said, hey, get rid of him. 
that he may be killed, the destruction of the flesh, that his spirit be, you know, one of the ways that the Lord will stop a saved individual from a life of sin is to kill him. Okay? We who are of the church of the living God, we get chastisement when we do wrong, when we go against the scriptures. But there are those of the church of the living God who live a life as the devil. God will kill them. God will kill them. That does not mean that they are not saved. But because they are saved, he will kill them so that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. And otherwise kill you before you do more harm to yourself. It's, it's not speaking against once saved, always saved. This young man, this young man is a rank heretic, okay? And, you know, he mentioned, um, second. Well, well, let's continue. Let's continue with uh, what this young man has to say a little bit more, okay? And here you see him quoting Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10. Uh, let's continue. Paul says that if we sin willfully after we receive the knowledge of the truth, there, there remain no more sacrifice of sins. All right, too much is given, much is required. I'm speaking to the chosen ones. If you're chosen, you can't be believing this. Now, if you're not chosen, oh well. But if you're oh, chosen, did you, you, did you, you oh, stop that. Did you catch that? Devil, man. Did you catch that? Oops, why, why did I do that? Did you catch that? If you're chosen, you'll get it. If you're not chosen, I, I, I kind of messed up with the thing there. Here, let's go back a little bit, okay? Well, man, and this is the same lie he, he tricked Eve. Okay. This is the same lie he did. Once saved, always saved. Are we must now? Are we going to be perfect? Of course not. That's why we need to. Hey, wait, 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 I'm speaking to the chosen ones. If you're chosen, you, you can't be believing this. Now, if you're not chosen, oh well. But if you're chosen, oh, elect and non-elect, young man. Elect and non-elect. No pride there. See, see, no pride there. If you're chosen, you get it. If you're not, oh well. Elect and non-elect. Calvinism, a blend of Calvinism. This, this young man, and then right there, for many are called, but few are chosen. What about that? Hmm? What about Matthew chapter 22? What about Matthew chapter 22? Go to Matthew chapter 22. Now see, what this young man is not doing, he is not rightly, rightly dividing the word of truth. Matthew chapter 22 is before the death, burial, and resurrection. And he's talking about the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is the 1,000 year reign of Christ on earth at Jerusalem, which was being offered on to the Jews, the Hebrews. Okay? So when you see kingdom of heaven, which only appears in the book of Matthew, that is always a reference onto a physical, literal kingdom that will be in Jerusalem where Christ is sitting on the throne. Okay? All right, you get that? It's not pertinent for today because we are not building a kingdom today. That man of sin, the son of perdition, the Catholics are building a kingdom, that kingdom that will be ruled by that man of sin, inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist. Okay? Yes. But see, what this guy, this young man, you're a mess. He's not that rightly dividing the word of truth. Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 on to verse 14. Okay? And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by this, by parables, and said, The kingdom of heaven, which only appears in the book of Matthew, which is always a reference unto a physical literal, literal kingdom. Okay? The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding that they would not come, and they would not come. Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready, come unto the marriage. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants, and entreated them spitefully, and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies, and destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways, and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. 
And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king, now pay attention. Now then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is in reference to the Jews. Okay? This is in reference, context of the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is the thousand year reign of Christ on the earth after the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? And during the kingdom of heaven, it's all works. It's all works. Why is it all works? You don't need faith when you are going to be able to see Jesus Christ sitting on a throne. Okay? Faith is the evidence of things the th uh, faith faith is the evidence of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. What what is that? Hebrews chapter 11, okay? Hebrews chapter 11 instead of uh, bumbling and fumbling over it. Let's let's quote that verse. Hebrews chapter 11, just one verse. Well, verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. During the kingdom of heaven, after the time of Jacob's trouble, Jesus Christ is going to be on the throne. You're going to be able to see him. You don't need faith when you're going to be able to see him. This, Matthew chapter 22, for many are called, but few are chosen, is not applicable for us today. Okay? Instruction in righteousness, yes. But doctrinally, no. The context is of the kingdom of heaven. This young man is a mess. This young man is an absolute mess. Okay? Let's continue. Those of you can't fall for this lie. This is a lie of the devil, man. And this is the same lie he, he tricked Eve. This is the same lie he did. Once saved, always saved. Or we must. Now, are we going to be perfect? Of course not. That's why we need the blood of Christ. We need Jesus in our life to wash it from our sins. But when you make excuses to sin and, and live like the devil, like live like these demons, be on demon time, all right? The Most High God won't be pleased with, with that, with the one saved, always saved. You're right. He won't be pleased with you. But that doesn't mean that you're not once saved, always saved, son. And see, he, he quoted Hebrews chapter, and the thing there, Hebrews chapter 10, Okay, the problem with Hebrews, going to Hebrews, to prove your argument, young man, is that the book of Hebrews is not written for us today doctrinally. Okay, but Hebrews chapter 10, let's read verses 22 on to verse 29. Okay, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled, led, having our hearts sprinkled, from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another as so and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Verse 26, for if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. See, here's your problem, son. Okay? This teaches you that you can't get your salvation back. But see, what are you teaching? You're teaching, okay, once saved, always saved is a lie. So then you are not, your, your salvation is dependent upon you, what you do, not on the Lord. See, you're a mess, son. You're an absolute mess and you're a wicked heretic. You're teaching contrary to the truth. You need to shut up, okay? This teaches you that you cannot get your salvation back. Verses 28 and 29. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. 
How of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace? See, during the time of Jacob's trouble, you take that mark of the beast, you're damned to hell. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, the law is going to come back. Yes, it will. Because that man of sin is going to be putting off that he is Christ. Okay? And he, he makes a really bad blunder in here, which I'm going to point out, which shows you of what spirit this young man, unfortunately, is of. Okay? But it, the third temple is going to be rebuilt, and they're going to be offering animal sacrifices again. Okay? See, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 22 under verse 29, young man, and all you brainwashed disciples of his teaches you that you can't get it back. Okay? And he, he quoted 2 Peter chapter 2. Go there, please. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 20 under verse 22. Now, read, let's read what is being said here. Okay? 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 20 on to verse 22. For if, after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have, no, have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened... Unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog, male, is returned to his male own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her female wallowing in the mire. Uh, once you are born again, truly saved, once saved, always saved, and you go contrary to the truth, uh, what he is saying is, because you know the truth, it is worse for you. For example, perfect example, you're saved, born again, converted. I used to be a sodomite, okay? Me being saved, born again, converted. If I were to go, knowing what I know of the truth of the scriptures, how God hates sodomy, if I, as a saved man, were to go and lie with another man, that would not cost me my salvation. But, see, I knew the truth. The latter end would be worse for me than if I had not known it, okay? That would not mean that I would lose my salvation, Oh, my testimony would be shot. God would be ashamed of me for eternity. I would lose a whole bunch of things, but not my salvation. See, what this man is telling you, dear, dear friends, this man is telling you that your salvation is dependent upon what you do. And it's not a license to sin. Uh, Romans chapter 6, link for it in the description box. A, uh, we go through an expository video of Romans chapter 6, okay? Grace is not a license to sin. No, it is not. God will be harsh, especially on those of his own, but it won't cost you your salvation. If you deny him, he will deny us. That's not talking about your salvation, son. That's talking about provisions, gifts, mercy. When he saves you, you are eternally secure. And if you could lose it, then it's your salvation kept by what you do, which this heretic is teaching. Okay? This young man is a heretic. Be careful with this guy. Let's continue. So don't fall into that snare. Don't fall into that lie. Many people will give scriptures to justify them being willful sinners, but the chosen ones were not living in willful sin. Okay? Every sin is willful. Again. Well, okay. I'm going to go in. <laughs> I'm going to go in, man. Don't forget to like the video. Oh, yeah, Number yeah. Two, yeah. yeah. Praises of men. Like the video. Yeah. Number two, this is another lie they taught us. And I, and when I was first, when I first joined the Christianity church, I used to believe this. The laws and commandments are done away with until I actually read the Bible. Study to show yourself approved. What do you got? See what he did? Okay. Oh, yeah. He gives the scripture there. Okay. But he just quoted, study to show thyself approved. But he didn't quote the rest of the word, verse. He's not telling them what that means. Rightly divide the word of truth. This is written for you. The whole book is written for you. The whole book is not written to you. Okay? You got to remember that. You got to rightly divide the word of truth. 
Salvation is different depending on the dispensation. Garden of Eden, okay? Garden of Eden was all works. The uh, second uh, dispensation, the time of the patriarchs, similar to ours, but it was predicated on obedience, okay? That uh, dispensation was similar to ours, not the same, okay? They still had to do, okay? Because it was faith in what God will do during the time of the patriarchs. Today, what differs is we have faith in what God has done, okay? That's the difference between the two. Third dispensation was the law, faith and works. The fourth dispensation, which we are in, saved by grace through faith. Fifth dispensation, the time of Jacob's trouble, faith and works. The sixth dispensation, the kingdom of heaven, works. And the seventh and final dispensation, sin is obliterated. There is no more sin in the seventh and final dispensation. That's eternity. Sin will be gone. Okay? Sin will be gone. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. Be dispensational. See, you try to take something from another dispensation and apply it to us doctrinally. Doctrinally. Doctrine is what is pertinent for us to be saved and be right with God today in this dispensation. This young man is taking the law and trying to make it pertinent today, which we are going to look at, and no, that's heresy. It's heresy, okay? You know, he puts the verse up there, but he doesn't tell you what it means. And he only says, study to shoot thyself approved. But he doesn't talk about rightly dividing. This, this kid's a mess. He's a mess. And all of you, and you people who have given to him, you have your reward. People, this man is not saved. He's a deceiver. Oh, but this is the sign of the time. But let, let's let the young man, da, 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 da. Let, let's let him talk. You actually read the Bible for yourself and you apply it to your life. You can't be deceived by wolf in sheep clothing. You can't be deceived by false teachings. You can't be deceived by this no more because you actually study yourself. All right, the, the Bible says over and over again that Christ didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill. What does that mean? <laughs> what is it? Uh, oh, 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 let me... Uh, that means that the law still stands today. The Bible even oh, oh, that the law still stands today. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. And he also quotes James. <laughs> and today we are told by Paul that we are saved by grace through faith. But in the book of James, there's this one thing that James says that you can't get away from. Can, his, can that... Can his faith save him? Okay? But let's, let's, okay, Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Oh, wow. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, the Sermon on the Mount, which is doctrine for the <laughs> kingdom of heaven. The doctrine for the kingdom of heaven, Matthew chapter 5, 6 and 7. The Sermon on the Mount. No mention of the crucifixion, death, burial, and resurrection. No mention of the blood. Faith is mentioned one time in the form of a rebuke. It's all works. It's all works because the kingdom of heaven is all works because you're going to be able to see Jesus Christ. This young man is not rightly dividing the word of truth. This is a perfect textbook example of the mess someone makes when they don't rightly divide the word of truth. Mark the mess. Okay? But Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 20. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. What does that mean? He said, that means the law is still by... Oh! You sly devil. You sly devil. Okay? For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. What is this fulfillment? We will look at this. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. The thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not doctrinally pertinent for us today, young man. You are wicked. You are deceiving people. Okay? 
But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Verse 20. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Oh, young man, you're da you're dangerous. You are you have made you are making a mess of the scriptures. You really are. You really are. Okay, but okay, he said, what 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 is this? What this fine young heretic say? What did they say? Jeez. Oh, get out! You can't be deceived by this no more because you actually study yourself. All right, the, the Bible says over and over again that Christ didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill. What does that mean? That means that the law still stands today. The Bible even says that what is sin? Sin is breaking the law, breaking the sin commandments. Sin is transgression of the law. Right, so that's what sin is. So if people are telling me that the law is done away with, that means sin is done, with, done away with. That means that we can't sin, which is false. <laughs> wow. You, you Truly, you have a dizzying, a dizzying intellect. You truly do. Uh, no. See, the Ten Commandments were God's perfect perfect laws to be right with him and no one at no one could keep the ten commandments perfectly because what does james have to say about that okay you need talking about james go to james chapter 2 just one verse okay james chapter 2 verse 10 just one verse for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Okay? So, if you break one commandment, you've broken them all. The Ten Commandments were God's perfect requirements for man to be right with him. But see, man soon, quickly discovers that even at your best, your vanity, you can't keep the Ten Commandments perfectly. But... See, what he's saying is that those of us who say the truth, that we are not to keep the Ten Commandments today to be saved, to be right with God, he's saying, well, we're saying that sin's done away with. Uh, have you ever read Romans chapter 7 before? Link for an expository video on Romans chapter 7 will be in the description box. Have you ever read Romans chapter 7 before? So I guess Paul was talk, taught that sin was done away with, because he sinned. This, this, this young man is a mess. But go to Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. See, the book of Hebrews is written in such a way because the Jews who have been all their life taught that you got to keep the law, got to keep the law, got to keep the law. Okay, then they're going to realize, whoa, we missed it. Like the authorized version of the scripture believers were always telling us we never believed it. You know, at mid, I believe, midway during the time of Jacob's trouble is when the Hebraic people, the Jews, are going to understand, whoa, whoa, and they're going to come to their true Lord and Savior, our God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. They're going to be led to the book of Hebrews because it's written in a format to explain to someone who is coming away from under the law, okay, being taught that you got to be under the law, that it was never, you know, whatever, that there was no anything fulfilled in the law. That it's written in that way for someone coming away from that during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? That's why it's written in this way. Hebrews chapter 7. What, what was fulfilled? What was fulfilled? Hebrews chapter 7, verses 17, on to the close of the chapter. For he testifieth. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. Unprofitableness thereof. Yes, and this, this young man is truly speaking words to no profit, dear friend. Okay, you're looking at it. All right, let's continue. For the law made nothing perfect. Hmm. But the bringing in of a better hope did. And Jesus Christ is our hope. Okay? By the which we draw nigh unto God. And in as much as not without an oath, he was made priest. For those priests were made without an oath. But this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent. 
thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. And they truly are many priests, because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come on to God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. For the law maketh men high priests, which have infirmity, but the word of the oath, which was since the law, maketh the Son, who is consecrated forevermore. And now let's read in Hebrews chapter 8, verses 3 on to verse 9. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, wherefore it is of necessity that this man, Christ, have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shewed to thee in the mount. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Better co covenant meaning he is the king. And when he comes to rule and reign, fulfillment of the Abrahamic co covenant. Okay? Okay, let's continue. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Okay? The death of the testator, our Lord Jesus Christ, brought in the New Testament. When he comes back to rule and reign as king, he's going to fulfill the Abrahamic covenant. Okay? Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Hmm. So there was fault in the first one? Really? Wow. Huh. And go to Hebrews now, chapter 10. Two verses. Verses 9 and 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Verses 9 and 10. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And we already read Hebrews, uh, uh, what was that, 9, about how the blood of bulls and goats couldn't sanctify the, uh, what was that? Uh, Hebrews chapter 9, uh, verse 12, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot, he never sinned, to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Christ fulfilled the law in that he was the lamb. God, uh, Genesis chapter 2 verse 8. God shall provide himself a lamb a burnt, for a burnt offering for sin. What was fulfilled, dear friend, is that the sacrifices were fulfilled. Okay? 
That was the fulfillment of the law. But, okay, so then they was like, well, then we should keep the Ten Commandments, right? Well, then we got a problem here. Okay, we got a problem with this. Go to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. See, brethren, those who are saved of the church of the living God, you notice I, I am not using that term Christian. He said he's a Christian. He sure is. I'm not. Okay? Romans chapter 7. Verses 7 on to verse 14. You might say, well, you're saying that the, the law is a bad thing. Romans chapter 7, verses 7 on to verse 14. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not no sin, but by the law. See, the Ten Commandments, dear friends, were God's perfect requirements for people to be right with him. We, we can't do it. We can't do it. If, if someone were to hold a gun at your head, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, keep the commandments perfectly. We already read in James chapter 2, verse 10, you can't do it. Okay? You can't do it. The law was there to bring us to Christ, to show us that we can't save ourselves at our best. We can't. Be right in God's eyes. Okay? Well, let's continue. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not no, known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. What does that mean? When you find out that there's something that is written that you can't do. Your sinful flesh wants to do what the law says you, you shouldn't do. All manner of concupiscence. The law says, thou shalt not covet. Your flesh wants to covet. Okay? For I was alive without the law once because you didn't know what sin was. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life. How is it so? How is it so? Ordained to life. To keep you from those things that God hates. I found to be unto death. Well, that, you might be saying, well, that's a contradiction. No. See, the law is good and holy. Yes. It's to keep you away from sin. But you realize, bloop, you can't keep it. You can't keep it. This young man is telling you that your salvation is your salvation because it's dependent on what you do, not what has been done. He's trying to bring you back under the law, which not even the Hebrews or us Gentiles could keep at our best. Okay? But it's ordained to life to keep you from those things that he hates. But... I found it to be unto death because it kills your self-righteousness. It kills your insides because you know, wow, I know what is perfect, holy, and good. I can't do it. So it's a double-edged sword, see. Yes, it's good. Amen. Hallelujah. But you can't keep it. Therefore, it kills you right here, boy. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me. And by it slew me. How did it deceive you? Oh, well, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. But uh, I broke it then that. If you break one, if you offend in one point of the law, you break the whole thing. That's what that's talking about. Okay? Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. Because the law was a good thing. To keep you from that sin. That's what made it good. God said, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Ten thou shalt nots. Right? But, the minute, you know, you try to do that, your flesh, you can't do it. Okay? The law is good to keep you from those things that you hate. That God hates, yes. But your flesh, you can't do it. So, was then that which was good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin which the law was there for, to show us what sin is. That it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, the law. 
that sin by the commandment might be exceeding sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Got a big conundrum there, son, trying to teach people to keep the Ten Commandments. Got a big conundrum there. And while we are here, okay, in Romans, see, today in this dispensation, when the Lord saves you, he doesn't leave, save you so you can go off and be led by a spirit that you can't identify, but just be led by your feelings. No. There are laws for us to obey today within the Pauline epistles. Yes. You want to know what the commandments for us are today? Romans chapter 13, verses 8 and 9. Owe no man anything, don't be in debt, but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this, now if you're not using the authorized version of the scriptures, this is not going to read right to you. Because there's something that's going to be missing. I'm not going to tell you what it is. If you're not using the King James Version, the true scriptures, but using a Bible, distinction, okay? They're different. Um, you're going to notice a big glaring difference. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Okay? Thou shalt not covet. Hmm. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Where is the commandment to keep the Sabbath? Hmm? Where, is the, where is the commandment to keep the Sabbath? What about idolatry? Oh, uh, Paul rebukes idolatry quite heavily in the books of First and Second Corinthians. Okay, making no graven images of the Godhead. Okay, like a lion on the cover of a book or something like that. No graven images like that. No, no, no. Uh, Paul addresses that elsewhere. Yes, he does. Okay, but where's the commandment to keep the Sabbath? Hmm? What about Passover? Okay. See, keeping the Sabbath is for the Jews. These are the commandments for us today. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you might, well, what about uh, uh, graven images? Read the books of 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Okay? Okay? Please, on your own time, do that. It would be helpful for you. And also, it might wake you up that this man's a heretic. Okay? Okay? So, yes, we have commandments to keep. Yes. Yes, we do. Okay? We are not lawless, led by our feelings. Yes. But see, what was the purpose of the law? Galatians. And this is, this is where you go to every time when you deal with these types of people. These types of people who want to bring you under the law. Okay? You racists. Okay? Galatians chapter 3, verses 21 unto the close of the chapter. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. The law, yes, was good to keep you away from sin. But see, you can't keep the law perfectly. Okay? Okay? But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were cut under the law. See, this man is not saved. He's kept under the law. Okay? He's under the law. It, because we're going to see what the law was made for. Okay? This man is not saved. He has not been set free. Okay? He doesn't have that liberty, okay, that is, comes from Christ. Okay? This man is not saved. Okay? But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. 
And see, he's teaching about the law. I got to be under the law. Being, you're justifying yourself. We are justified by Christ. He's teaching justify yourself. Plain as day. Okay? For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized, identified into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Okay? Also, Abraham's seed. I'm writing that down so I don't forget it. Also, links for the Abraham seed will be in the description box. Okay? Uh, Jew, nor, nor, neither Jew nor Greek. Neither bond nor free. Male or female. That's talking about salvifically. Pertaining to your salvation. Culturally, yes. I'm, I'm of Japheth. He's of Ham. Okay? I know people who are of Shem. I know people who are Hebrews. Absolutely. Okay? Culturally... There is difference there. Salvifically, salvation-wise, there's no difference. Okay? Okay? And 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Verses 9 on to verse 11. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. But for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and the sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, sodomites, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Thank you, pardon. We actually got a spring around here in Illinois. Pick your pardon. So we see here the purpose of the law. And while we are under the law to Christ, we can't keep the Ten Commandments. Okay? And in the one video, uh, I mentioned about how we are going to look in Acts chapter 15 again. Go to Acts chapter 15. Here, here's the death nail for this fine young man. Okay. Acts chapter 15, verses 1 under verse 2. Words to no prophet. Words to no prophet. Words to no prophet is someone telling you you got to keep the law to be saved. Which this young man is telling you. This is a textbook perfect example of someone speaking words to no profit. Okay? Not wanting to go with the scriptures and call ourselves what we called ourselves at the beginning, sir. Or to refer to the scriptures as the scriptures themselves refer to themselves as. That is not striving about words to no profit. This is words to no profit. But, Acts chapter 15, verses 1 and 2. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised, after the manner of Moses ye cannot be saved. Now, is he preaching openly circumcision? No. But what is being said here? Going under the law. Okay? That's what that means. Be circumcised. Circumcision was of the law. So what these people are saying is, except ye be circumcised and go under the law, after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Exactly what this young man is telling you. This, in Acts 15, is exactly what this young man is telling you. This man is lost. He is a heretic. He is not saved. He is preaching to you words to no profit. And his mouth must be stopped. Because he's teaching things for obviously filthy lucre's sake and for the praises of men. When therefore, verse 2, Paul and Barnabas 
had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And like I said, in the previous video, uh, not the one that was uploaded yesterday, but in the previous video, we go over this because I was accused of, um, by a God-fearing man, that I was uh, uh, teaching words to no profit and drawing people away from Christ. That was the accusation. This, here, this is someone who is truly drawing people away from Christ. I'm not. He is. Okay? But go to Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. Okay? Titus chapter 1. This is the sign of the times, people. This kind of stuff. Okay? Uh, this young man has, what, 127,000 subscribers? Boasting, getting, uh, putting up uh, a shout-out to so-and-so for giving me money? Getting the praise? This man is not saved. This man is lost. Need to beware. And Mr. Mark, if you see this, I hope you repent. I hope you repent. I hope you repent. Titus chapter 1, verses 10 on to verse 16. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Now, in context, uh, Paul is referring to the Jews, the Hebrews. For we, that we can take away from this, he's preaching circumcision. But he doesn't talk about it. No, he doesn't. But see, in circumcision, I'm meaning he's talking about going under the law. You just heard it. What, 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 what did he say? What did he say? The law still stands today. The Bible even said. The law still stands today. He's talking about the Ten Commandments, the law of Moses. You just heard it. Okay? This man's a heretic. Okay? Verse 11. Whose mouths must be stopped. Who subverts, with words to no profit, sir. Who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. 127,000 subscribers. Okay? Monetize getting money from Jesuit Google. Okay? And boasting about how people are giving him a hundred bucks? <laughs> you know, a wacky Canadian, not, not you, young man, I'm talking about someone else. A wacky Canadian has started this thing about me that I'm all about the filthy lucre. <laughs> yeah, right. When my stands cause me to lose support, yeah. Uh, this individual is all about the filthy lucre. He's all about the filthy lucre. 127,000 subscribers, monetized, and boasting in his comments, in his one whatever section about so-and-so, and you scroll down in that thing, that's not the only time he does that. This man is teaching things which he ought not for filthy, lucre, for filthy lucre's sake. Okay? One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, the Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. Cretans. Cretans of Japheth, a kindred within Japheth. And Paul here is saying the Cretans, a kindred within the kindred of Japheth, are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. Hmm. Hmm. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men <laughs> that turn from the truth. This young man is turning you from the truth, people. Okay? Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. You have 89 videos on masturbation, son. It's a little too much. They profess they know God, but in works they deny him. I'm keeping the law. You're denying him. For if you are if you are made right by keeping the law, you are fallen from grace. You're not saved, son. 
And any of you who are believing this man's teachings and looking to justify yourself by keeping the law, you're not saved. Some of you might be in error. That's a different thing. This man is a deceiver. Okay? Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. And of course, Galatians chapter 6, which I kind of already uh, brad eyes there. Okay. Galatians chapter 6, verses 12 on to verse 15. As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh. 127,000 subscribers. Boasting that people are giving you a hundred money, a hundred dollars of money, and putting their names up there and stuff. Come on. Come on. Fair shoe in the flesh. They constrain you to be circumcised to go under the law. Only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. If this young man truly got were saved. Wow. What a, dif what a difference this young man could make. But this young man is not saved. You're looking at me, Mark. You're lost. If you want to know how to truly be saved, there will be a link for you in the description box, okay? Come, let us reason together. You and I. If you want to get a hold of me personally, there will be two emails that you can get a hold of me from. Okay? Be careful, those of you who want to send obscenities. I'll expose you publicly. Okay? Not afraid to do that. Let's continue. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. See, this young man preaching to you, you got to keep the law. You're justifying yourselves. Because uh, uh, one of my favorite portions of Scripture, absolutely one of my favorites, Galatians chapter 2, verses 20 on to verse 21. And see, what this young man is teaching teaches contrary to this. I am crucified with Christ. Nonetheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, not by the law, Son, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Son, you're teaching that Christ is dead in vain because you are keeping yourself right with God by keeping the law. Repent. And the Lord rebuke you. You are wicked. And son, you're, you're going to hell. You're going to hell. Be very careful with what you're teaching, son. Be very careful. Okay? Now go back to Acts chapter 15. Now let's read verses 6 unto verse 11. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men, brethren, Ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. By faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye God, pay attention, to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. Ooh. Right out of the water, son. Let's read that. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to go back under the law, to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? 
Well, Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments and my, his commandments are not grievous. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. But see, he fulfilled the law and the sacrifices. And the doctrine for us today is within the Pauline epistles. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay. The law was a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. And when Christ sets you free, you are not under the law. You are under the law to Christ. Yes, but not the Ten Commandments. You cannot keep them perfectly. Okay. Besides, under the Ten Commandments, under, the, under that law, animal sacrifices. Jesus Christ is the Lamb, son. You do greatlier. You do greatlier. And verse 11. But we believe that through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. And let's finish this off by 19 on to verse 26 in Acts chapter 15. Now they, they come to an agreement and they're sending people these letters on to the Gentiles and stuff like that. Verses 19 on to verse 26. Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble them not, which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols. Okay? Pollution of idols crosses dispensational lines. Okay? Idols. Catholic idols, like Christmas trees and stuff like that. Idols, okay? To abstain from, okay? But that we write unto them that we abstain from pollution of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood, okay? For Moses of old time hath him in every city them that pre... Uh, uh, excuse me. For Moses of old time hath in every city... Thank you, brother... Them that preach him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas surnamed Barsabas and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brethren send greetings unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. You're not a Hebrew. You're a Gentile. Get over yourself. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words to no profit, subverting your souls, saying you must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandment. What do you do with this, son? See, you're not rightly dividing the word of truth. You're, you're a mess. You're a doctrinal mess. Okay? It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, excuse me, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, Men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And here's, a, here's an addition. Here's an addition. Okay. In Galatians. Galatians. Where is that? Galatians. Galatians. Verses 3 and 4. And this is a warning to all of you, all of the disciples of this man, all you wicked black Hebrew Israelite people. You're not Hebrews, okay? You're not keeping the law. You can't. You're a bunch of lying hypocrites, okay? Here's a warning. Uh, Galatians 5, verses 3 and 4. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Now again, we here in America, when men are born, they're circumcised, yes, okay? But what he's talking about are those who willfully decide to go and get themselves circumcised because they were led astray by people teaching contrary to the truth of the gospel today, speaking words to no prophet such as this young man is, okay? For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified 
by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Now, that doesn't mean that you are lose your salvation. No, what that means is you're doing it yourself. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Okay, and he even, like, oh, I know, I know, I know. Uh, yeah, yeah, this young man has no concept of this. None. Okay, none. Why? Because he's saving himself. He's saving himself. And he's teaching many of you to save yourself also. Okay, this young man might as well just be an easy believism heretic. Okay, fallen from grace, that doesn't mean that you lose your salvation. You are saved by grace through faith. But if you are trying to keep the law, then who's doing it? You are. Okay. Now, let's continue. It says that, what is sin? Sin is breaking the law, breaking the commandments. All right, so that's what sin is. So if people are telling me that the law is done away with, that means sin is done, with, done away with. That means that we can't Already sin, which is this. false. 100% false. Okay. Even the spirit of truth who the world can receive because it see him not, neither know him. But you know him and, he, and he, it dwells within you. You gotta love the truth, guys. You gotta love this truth. I do, and you that's don't. What, that's what being a Christian is about. It's about loving this truth, man. Whether you're a Hebrew or a Gentile, you gotta love it. Don't be overly. See the inference there that he's a true Hebrew. Be religious, don't. And you're not. Okay, remember the Pharisees were religious. Who were the who were the ones? Now the Pharisees didn't kill Jesus. They 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 gave him over to the Romans. But who were Christ's enemies? The religious people. Mm -hmm. Don't fall into that spirit, Romans, guys. So. Be spiritual. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Be led by the Spirit of truth. That's spiritual. I know this new... You're not, son. People are programmed to believe that spirituality is demonic because that's what's being promoted in the mainstream. The new age. So that is all That is all demonic. The And he's making a reference about the charismatics. And that is of the devil, yes. Just to clarify that. But if you're led by the Holy Spirit, that's... See, this young man does is very good at blending lies with truth. See, remember the analogy of rat poison. Rat poison is 95% good food, 5% poison, okay? he's He is pretty blatant, but see, he, he's speaking, he does. He's intermingle, intermingling lies with truth and doing this. Her ways are always movable that thou canst not know them, okay? This young man is very slick. That's that's true spirituality. Okay, that's just being spiritual. Don't be fooled by the new age stuff. Okay, and the Bible even says that if a man does this, the, 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 the man does his commandments and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever great in the kingdom of heaven, you just said it, which is after the time of Jacob's trouble. Oh, this, this young man is a mess. Hey. Breaks and teaches other people to break it. We'll call least in the kingdom of heaven. Now, I believe in the, wo the word wholeheartedly. So if that's what Christ is saying, and I'm a Christ follower, I'm a Christian, the Bible even says, he who hears my saying, he shall be built like a rock. And those who don't hear the saying, going, the, like the sand when the, when the going to the Sermon on the Mount, all these heretics do this. The Sermon on the Mount is for the kingdom of heaven, which is all works. This man is a works salvationist. He's lost. Beware, people, beware. But the wind comes, drives it away. Okay, so understand this, man, that the laws and commandments are not done away with. Now, are, are we righteous because uh, we keep the law? Absolutely not. We're righteous by our faith in Christ. We're right. Now, see? Now, see? He just told truth. But his whole lead up onto that was heresy. Okay? You see how they do this? You see? Rat poison is 95% good food, 5% poison. You see how he just did that? Leading up to he, him just saying that was the preaching going under the law. But he's like, I understand. We're not saved by keeping the law. See? See? Wicked. This is wicked. Right, is because Christ is in us. The spirit of Christ is in us. If any man had not the spirit of Christ, Christ it doesn't belong to him. And you don't, son. So we, the Bible says, if you love me, Jesus says out of himself that Jesus is a man. He's just like us, guys. When we get in a relationship, we want we want someone to prove that they love us. We don't want them to just say it with their mouth, right? right? We don't want to say, oh, I love you, I love you, but they do the opposite. So Christ is the same thing. When, when he says, if you love me, you're going to keep my commandments. Yeah, and in John chapter fourteen, when he talks about that, okay, when he talks about that. That is still before the death, burial, and resurrection, but he's telling the disciples about the coming dispensation today, okay? 
That does not mean if you do not keep his commandments that you lose your salvation. You want to show the Lord that you love him? Do what he said. Absolutely. Amen. But see, what he is saying is, what he is saying is that if you don't do what he says, you're not saved. And there are people, and there, hey, I don't do what he says all the time. Neither do you, Church of the Living God. Okay? Okay? But what he is saying is, if you don't do what he says, you're not saved. Okay? That's what he's saying. And John, in John 14, 15, and you can read that. We, we, we got to move along here. But as you can read in John chapter 14, context, verses 15 on to verse 26. He's talking, giving them, getting them prepared for the coming dispensation, which we have today. Okay? And in 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 5, okay? Yes, we show the Lord we love him by doing what he said. Yes, but if we don't, that doesn't mean that we're not saved or lose our salvation. You see? The Im implication is, if you're not keeping his commandments, you're lost. I don't keep the com his commandments all the time. That is commanded us within the Pauline epistles. Neither do you, Church of the Living God, all the time. No. Why? Because we're not sinlessly perfect. Okay? You see what this young man is doing? This, this man is a devil. This man has the devil, or not the devil, excuse me. This young man has devils in him. Okay? A little bit of truth, a lot of truth, but with a little bit of error. Okay? This man, young man is wicked. All right, like I said, I know that we're saved by grace through faith. But when you have faith produces works, and those works are going to produce keeping laws keeping commandments, or even the Bible says when Antichrist comes as a lawless one, okay? A uh, lawless one. Show me where it calls him the lawless one in the authorized version of the scriptures. You got that from the Bible, son. You did not get that from the scriptures. Satan will not be a lawless one. That man of sin, the son of perdition, will not be a lawless one. Oh, he will be against the laws of Scripture. But see, he's going to establish his own laws. Because I'll give you an example. That man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be yoked with Catholicism. See this? This is the Catechism of the Catholic Church. This is the law of man. Okay? These are the laws of men. Okay? Uh, stuff like this is what that man of sin is going to keep. He's not going to be a lawless one. But what he's going to do, like it says in Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, he's going to change laws. And bring, uh, and look at this. This came with it. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, queen of heaven. Oh yeah, queen of the world, Mary. Yeah, Semiramis. Yeah, okay. These are the laws of men. This, the catechism of the Catholic Church, is what that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be promoting. So, no, 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 no. That man of sin is not a lawless one. Okay? He, he's not going to be adhering to any laws of Scripture. No, but he's going to make his own. We make a new book. Like in that one movie um, with Pacino and Reeves, whatever that was. It's like, well, we'll make a new book. With new laws and stuff like that. That man of sin is not going to be a lawless one. Because when you read, and we're, we are going to, we're, uh, I have some scriptures written here, but we've got to be concerned with the time here. But Isaiah, meaning I only got, I can only do three hours. I could, we could be here for four or five hours if we wanted to be, just so you know. Time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But this is what Satan is. Uh, Isaiah chapter 14, verses 20, 12 on to verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into the heavens, into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Five I wills. I will. I will. I will. 
This young man, I will keep the law. I will, I will. It's what I do. The fifth dispensation, the time of Jacob's trouble. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Yeah. Verse 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Yeah. That man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, you are not going to find in the scripture. You're not going to find it. Antichrist, I believe, appears five times. And in all of them, you do not see the Antichrist. You do not see it. The title for that man of sin, the son of perdition, or the abomination that maketh desolate. Those are the titles for that man. Okay? Very clever. Let's continue. Antichrist is to come with being a, um, a, sin, a sin. That's what, because that's what um, the Bible, according to the Bible, a legal scripture says that um, breaking, uh, what sin does is breaking the commandments. Yes. So the Antichrist, when he comes back, he's to be coming as a lawless one. Oh, no, no son. He's going to make his own laws. They're going to fall for it. Not according to the scripture, but. In many people, it's in the churches. Okay, it's in your family. I mean, God forbid, but this is the truth. How many verses off this whole video, man? Uh, your friends, your family, you might be sleeping. Which you don't expound, expound on at all. Next, some of y'all are sleeping next to the devil, man. Like, it goes deep, man. It goes deep. But yeah, the laws and commandments are not done away with. The Ten Commandments, what well, everyone should be keeping. Here's here's uh, the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. All right? <laughs> okay. See what he just did? Revelation, okay. Revelation chapter 14. All right? This, this this young man, you you're wicked. You are wicked. You, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Revelation fourteen twelve. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Yes. During the dispensation of the time of Jacob's trouble, where if any man take, let's read the context of this. Uh, Revelation 14, verses 9 on to verse 12. When someone during the time of Jacob's trouble, you know, all the Christians that are going to be in the time of Jacob's trouble following that man of sin who's going to look like the Roman Catholic Jesus, okay? Um, if any man takes the mark of the beast, okay? The mark of the beast in the right hand or in the forehead, okay? Uh, Revelation 14, 9 on to verse 12. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image... And receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever. You know what you do when you come to this? Where's my pen? You know what you do when you come to this whosoever? You take your little pen, okay, and you go and circle that whosoever. And whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. See, there are people out there, Christians, who are telling you that it's okay to take the mark of the beast in your right hand or in your forehead, and then when it comes time, cut off your hand or gouge it out of your forehead. No, you take that mark of the beast, you're done. You're going to hell. No, ipso facto, you're going to hell. No second chances, you're done. Okay? And during the time of Jacob's trouble, you got to rightly divide, this young man is a mess. During the time of Jacob's trouble, it's going to be faith and works. The law is going to return because that man of sin is going to uh, bring put the law back into practice to appease the Jews for a time so they can have animal sacrifices in their third rebuilt temple. Okay? The law is going to return. Yes. Yes. And then uh, midway through that, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to come in looking like the Roman Catholic Jesus. I am God. And then at that point, I believe a lot of the Hebrews, the Jews, are going to be like, Oh, boy. Whoa, wait, whoa, whoa, no. Oh, oh, we, oh. Hence, the book of Hebrews, the book of James. Okay? Yeah. Verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Faith and works. Faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble. 
Not for today, you wicked heretic. Okay? Let's continue. So always remember that law's commandments, man. We got it, you know? And like I said, I know we're not righteous by the law. And, and But you just we, found contrary to it. We want to please God. That's it. Are we going to be perfect? Are we going to keep all the laws? Absolutely not. But we're going to keep these Ten Commandments. Because <laughs> we know that this it still stands, man. That's what God wants from us. To keep. That's how we show we love God. And we love Christ. By keeping these Ten Commandments. So these people who are saying the law is done away with, the commandments are done away, 100% false. Number three. This is a weird thing. I, I never, this is always weird to me. This never sit right in my spirit. You are not saved unless you, you speak in tongues. And that's... Okay, you know, even the Bible says... And that, yeah, and that's ridiculous her heresy come from the charismatic wing nuts, okay? S to steal a phrase from his holiness. Hope he doesn't uh, get me for a uh, copyright there. But yeah, for crazy charismatics who, you know, say the evidence of the Holy Ghost is you speaking blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that, that is heresy. See? He's telling you the truth here. Is that um, the gift of speaking in tongues is also the gift of uh, interpretation. That means that when someone's speaking in tongues, there has to be someone to interpret it. Every time I hear someone speaking in tongues, I never hear anyone interpreting it. Okay, so this is this is false, guys. You're not saved just because you can speak in tongues. Or like, let's say true. you're not going to be saved just because you can't speak in tongues. 100% false. Okay. I don't know who came up with this. I don't know who came up with that, but that's not true. I know that fourth one, Church of the Living God. Don't worry. Wait for it. Number four would be the rapture. This is a lie I fell for. I'll be on YouTube videos watching. I'm pretty sure some of you guys do this too. Oh, God gave me a dream of the rapture. Oh, I had a dream. I had a vision. The Bible says... Now, see, he's talking about those crazy charismatics with their dreams and visions. If you come to this channel, you'll see a section uh, refuting charismatic heresy. I have seen, I have dreamed. Yes, those guys are crazy. Uh, there's this channel, um, I forget what it's called, the uh, Lord's Kingdom or something like that, who just today, uh, getting the link for this, that June is the time there's going to be the rapture. Yeah, and what he's talking about, he's talking about the crazy charismatics with that I have seen. I have absolutely okay, but but let's continue, okay? Because that um, God has not sent these false prophets to give that, that these false prophets who falsify pro prophet, false prophesy dreams. All right, the Bible says he when Jesus says at his own mouth that he who endures the end shall be saved. Jesus said that. Whoa! Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. In Matthew chapter 24, he who endures to the end, yes, he certainly, he certainly did. He certainly did. Oh. Any of you who are of the church of the living God, saved, born again, converted, new creatures, you're listening to this young man. It's like, oh, uh, oh, wow. Yeah, exactly. The sign of the times, brethren. Yes. Matthew 24, 13. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. What is Matthew chapter 24 talking about? It's talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? It's talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. That leads up, you know, Matthew chapter 25, talking about then shall the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 24, uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble. Matthew chapter 23, the atmosphere before the time of Jacob's trouble, which we are in right now, basically. Okay? Okay. Uh, all right, this is not talking, Matthew chapter, this is what all these heretics who preach against the redemption of the purchased possession being taken out before the time of Jacob's trouble, they erroneously refer to it as the pre-tribulation rapture. This is what, this is what they all do. This is what they all do. I, I have to. Um, Someone who is really good at refuting this, I have to do this. Uh, go look up His Holiness, Brian Denlinger. He, he does a lot of things rebuking these types of people with, that speak against the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay, you got to give him that due. I mean, but still, Matthew chapter 24, yes, during the time of Jacob's trouble, you have to endure to the end to be saved. Today, we don't endure. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. 
We don't have to endure to the end to be saved to anything. Okay? Because it's not our salvation. See? that That's what that is. It's his salvation because he's earning it, keeping it by keeping the law. And yet making nuggets to the truth, but yet teaching contrary to the truth while yet acknowledging the truth. You see how crazy these people get. Okay? And I'm not making a reference to the fact that you're a Hamite. Okay? The Lord rebuke you, you wicked man. Okay? No. No. Okay? But people who teach against the truth of Scripture. Okay? Yes. 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 Matthew chapter 24, 13. Yes. It's talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. We don't have to endure to the end to be saved today. Because if we are absent from the body, present with the Lord. Okay? But let's continue. We would have to endure tribulation. So you know how the Bible even says that God is not the author of confusion. So some people believe in a, in a pre-tribulation, a post-tribulation, a mid-tribulation. It's confusion. So we, yeah, confusion led by Satan, not according to the Scripture. No, that's not of God. All right, when Christ comes, when when the days of Lot was on the earth, the Bible even says, "As the days of Lot shall be the son, as the days of Noah, the days of Lot shall be the coming of the Son of Man." What happened in the days of Noah? He fled the earth. What happened in the days of law? Fire and brimstone. When Christ comes back, he's not coming back to give us hugs and kisses and smiles. He's coming back to burn the wicked. He's coming back to destroy the ungodly. That's true. All the sinners. Yep. Uh, Amos chapter 9 verse 10. He's coming back to destroy this world. All the people who, who, who are living unrighteous, all the people who hate God, who hate Christ, all the sinners, he's destroying them all. Amen. Right? He's not coming back to rapture. No, but what happened in law? The angels came. And hey, Lot, we're about to destroy this place. Lot's wife, she looked back. She was a foolish woman, just like most women today. Okay, she Genesis chapter 18. Now, he's mentioning Lot about how the angels came and took him out, which is a type of the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay, and <laughs> Genesis chapter 18. Okay, Genesis chapter 18. Verses 23 and 25. On to verse 25. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? So see, in type, Lot was taken out before the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. In type, um, Noah and his family, his wife and his three sons and their wives, were in the ark taken out before the destruction uh, by flood. Okay, In type, that is making a reference onto how the righteous are taken away. And also, Isaiah chapter 57, those of you of the Church of the Living God, you know this quite well, but these, these people are being lied to or who follow this man. Okay, Isaiah chapter 57, verses 1 and 2. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart, and merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Now, is this a hint onto the redemption of the purchased possession in Isaiah? Could be. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. Okay? So in type, it's talking about the righteous being spared from God's wrath. From God's judgment. We're gonna we're all gonna give an account of ourselves at the judgment seat of Christ. But see, the time of Jacob's trouble, that's God's wrath. Okay, but getting a little ahead of myself. Let's let's hear Mark the Mess keep speaking. Come on. She was foolish. The angels came, she got destroyed, she turned into a pillar of salt, and the angels protected Lot. The angels got and that's the same thing that's gonna happen too. All right, there's no, there's no rapture, there's no pre-tribulation, but I You're right, there is no rapture. Bravo! Yeah, there is no rapture. You're right. There is a redemption of the purchased possession. There is a catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Oh, I, hey, hey, man, I guess, uh, I guess I'm striving about words to no profit, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
No, there is no rapture. There is a redemption of the purchased possession, though. But I agree with you. There ain't a rapture. There ain't a rapture. You're right. You're right. That's one of their arguments. You won't find rapture in the scriptures. You're right. <laughs> but you will find the redemption of the purchased possession. You'll see how, what he's making reference to, and just lied about, okay? About how, yes, Lot was saved. In type. In type. Showing us that God will take the righteous way from the judgment that's coming upon the wicked. Okay? Okay? <clears throat> But you're right. There is no rapture. Amen. Amen, young man. I fell for that. I fell for that so many times, guys. That's the Christianity program that they program. Now, here, here is what he's going to do that all these people who speak against the redemption of the purchased possession do. Watch this. He's going to mention it's like, well, the uh, redemption of the purchased possession, people are talking about, a, you know, that we're going to get away from suffering and stuff like You'll see. It was the rapture. It's, and the reason why it's easy to accept, because you want to believe that we won't have to go through tribulation. And that, that's the thing. That's the thing about the rapture, which is dangerous to believe in, that we don't have to go through tribulation. We don't have to go through uh, what's going to come. You know, but if you have faith. You just shot yourself in the foot there, young man, with those verses that you flashed up there and didn't give anyone enough time to appropriately read. You have true faith. And you don't have the spirit of fear. You have the Holy Spirit. God does not give us a spirit of fear, but a power of mind and a power, a sound mind and love. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Leave the scripture right there, right? When you have that spirit in you, you don't live in fear. You don't care if... Why are you putting those verses up for people to see and not you reading it yourself, young man? Yeah. We go through tribulation because the Most High God is with us. What happened to the Israelites when they were in, um, when they were in, uh, um, when the Egyptians were trying to kill them? Right? God was with them, man. God was with them. Mm -hmm. And He provided a way out for them. So mm -hmm. it's the same thing when we're, when the hell is gonna break loose in America or anywhere in the world. God is with us, man. The Holy Spirit is yes. within us. Yes. The chosen ones, right? The people who don't believe in these lies. Chosen ones. Oh, there's right? that so Calvinism man, again. Sure, guys, don't fall for. I, mean, I fell for this, guys. When I first came, when God woke me up. I was on YouTube just walk. Uh, God woke you up? No. Satan deceived. You're not saved. Okay. See, his argument is like, well, it, uh, you want to believe that you're not going to be going through tribulation. Um, we are. Let's let the scriptures. Acts chapter 14. We're almost done. Like I said, listening to this young man is like listening to Jacob Thompson. Very hard to do. Okay. But Acts chapter 14. Verse 22, just one verse, okay? Now, see, contrary to what this young man is teaching, um, no, we are going to go through much tribulation as the church of the living God. Yes, we are not appointed to God's right. See, what he's doing is blurring the time of Jacob's trouble. That's God's wrath, okay? Christians like this are going to be going through the, the great tribulation, right. But the church of the living God is going to be caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? He's confusing it. He's blurring it. But Acts chapter 14, just one verse, verse 22. Uh, let's read verses uh, 21 and 22. And when they had preached the gospel in that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, and that we must through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Now, kingdom of God in this context is not the kingdom of heaven. Whenever you see kingdom of heaven, it is always a reference unto the physical kingdom where Jesus Christ is going to be ruling and reigning from. Kingdom of God can be a reference unto the kingdom of heaven, but most of the time it is a reference unto the spiritual. And that's determined by the context, you know, the, the meat in between the sandwich, okay? That's determined by the context. And the context 
and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. This heretic would say kingdom of God there. He would, he would lie to you and confuse it with the kingdom of heaven. It's not the kingdom of heaven there. That is talking about the spiritual kingdom. How can you prove that? Keep reading. Okay? Uh, I mean, you read the whole context. We're not going to keep reading here because it shifts in there. But this is not a reference unto the kingdom of heaven, the actual physical kingdom. This is a reference unto the spiritual. And what does it say? That we must through, that we must through much tribulation? Oh, you ever been persecuted for your faith there, brother, sister? You ever been threatened by the Jesuits? Have you ever had your life threatened? Have, have you ever had someone threaten your wife? Hmm? Oh, but what there, mate? I'm making that up. <laughs> yeah, tell that girl to get a haircut, by the way. Okay? Yeah. 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 Okay? Yeah. And John, John chapter 16... John chapter 16, verse 33. Remember, in the latter book, parts of the book of John, our Lord is preparing the disciples for the coming dispensation that we are in today. Okay? But, John chapter 16, verse 33. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. Yes, yes. And more on this. See, he's saying that we who preach this, the doctrine, the truth of the redemption of the purchased possession, that we are saying that, oh, we're going to get out of tribulation within our life. Uh, no, we're going through a lot of tribulation. My wife and I are going through an, an incredible amount of tribulation right now. Okay? We are. But see, what he's doing is... He's confusing it. We who are saved, we are not appointed to God's wrath. The time of Jacob's trouble, the seven years after we get redeemed, that seven years is God's wrath being poured upon the earth. We are not appointed to that. We get redeemed before that. This heretic is blurring that, saying uh, that he's confusing it, saying that well, we're not going to have, we're going to have tribulations. Oh, definitely. Well, what do you do with this hot shot? 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 9 on to verse 14. Paul, the apostle. For I, think, for I think that God has set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake. But ye are wise in Christ. This is Paul's sarcasm. Okay, We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. Yeah. And labor, working with our own hands. Being reviled, we bless by telling the truth. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat. What are you talking about? Huh? That we don't go through tribulation. We do. We do. But see, what he's talking about is He's making a reference by blurring it. He's making a reference onto the time of Jacob's trouble. That we, the church of the living God, are going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble because right now God is dealing with Jew and Gentile. But during the time of Jacob's trouble, he's going to be dealing with Jacob. Who is Jacob? Israel, the Jew, the Hebrew, which you are not, young man. Okay? Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscurring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons I warn you. Hey, young man, are you the offscurring of the earth? You got 127,000 subscribers. You're getting money from Google, Jesuit Google, and you're boasting how people are giving you 100 bucks in your one section there. You're a friend of the world, son. You're an enemy of God. Okay? Oh, but wait, wait, wait. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Go now to 1 Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8 on to verse 11. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, 
that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, like this young man is doing and teaching you to do, but in God which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Ye also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. So yes, see, we are going through lots of tribulations today. But God's wrath we are not appointed to. And also, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Right? No, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 8 on to verse 13. Now as Janais and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further. For their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as, their also, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, Long-suffering, charity, patience, hmm, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. But out of them all the Lord delivered me. And Paul taught the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. We're almost done. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. Uh, you know what? Let's read 7 on the 10. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation, to be, you know, the blessed hope. Jesus Christ, he is the resurrection, to be redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, be dead, we should live together with him. Verse 11, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as you do. We're not appointed to wrath, son. And that wrath is the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, anyone who will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer uh, persecution. We are going through tribulation right now. That's not what we teach. Okay? You are teaching contrary to the scripture, son. You are in great danger. And of course, the uh, places where we can read about the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? Uh, of course, 1 Corinthians. We're just going to go through this. We're just going to go through this. 1 Corinthians 15. Verses 51 under the close of the chapter. Beloved, I shew you a mystery. 51 under verse 58, the close of the chapter, in 1 Corinthians 15. Beloved, or oh behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must be put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He is our redemption. He is our blessed hope. Okay? Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord.
Lord. Okay? And of course, we were just there in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. These are the obvious basic ones. It's within, without the Pauline epistles. And yes, you want to see the best proof of a redemption of the purchased possession before the time of Jacob's trouble? Ephesians chapter 1, the whole chapter. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. But 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 on to verse 18. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. And also Romans chapter 8 is a good uh, proof text for the redemption of the purchased possession. It's all without the Pauline epistles. The Apostle Paul preached and taught the redemption of the purchased possession. The catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. You, sir, are calling God a liar. God, who wrote the scriptures, okay? Paul used, uh, God used Paul, okay? God was in Paul. God guided Paul's hand, okay? The scriptures are God, God breathed. The Lord, through the scriptures and the Pauline epistles, teach us of the redemption of the purchased possession. You're teaching against the re uh, redemption of the purchased possession before the time of Jacob's trouble. You're, uh, you're speaking against God. You're in trouble, son. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. Verse 15 on to verse 18. Uh, we, verse 13. Yeah. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, dead. Okay? That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the trump of and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. And of course, not everybody's going to hear their name called, the saved. Remember um, when uh, Jesus was going into Jerusalem and the people heard, said that they heard a thundered, but some heard a voice? When it comes to the redemption of the purchased possession, our Lord is going to say all of our names at the same time. He's God. He can do that. And other people are going to hear maybe a thunder. I don't know. But we are going to be caught up to see him in the air, okay? And then commences the time of Jacob's trouble. Young man, you are teaching against what God has said. You are in great trouble. And here, let me let me give you uh, just, just one. I mean, you read the whole book of Revelation. Uh, I don't know how anyone of a rational mind can come away thinking that this is not God's wrath, but weirdos do. Revelation 16, verse just, just one verse, verse one. Okay, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. The whole time of Jacob's trouble, which the book of Revelation is addressing, is God's wrath. We who are saved are not appointed to God's wrath. Okay, This young man is a rank heretic. Let's continue. Watching all these people talking about the oh the dream of the rapture is coming 2020, uh, 2019, uh, 2021, all lies. Oh, and don't forget, and you're right, and you're right. That one channel, I can't remember who it was. Um, a brother of mine, a uh, uh, brother of ours, excuse me, uh, showed me that video of theirs. It's like, eh. um, he's he's right now saying that June is the time for the rapture. Like, Come on, the same guy who said that all this is lining up for May to be. The rapture. It's like, come on, yeah. What he is addressing, he's addressing the charismatic crazies who are doing that purposely to make the word of God look foolish. Okay? With all these charismatics, oh, God showed me a dream, the rapture is going to be in June, whatever. They're doing that to make the truth of God to look foolish. Hence, you got a heretic like this, a lost man, banking off of that, also trying to... Uh, Make the truth of God look foolish. Okay. Nice. And God revealed to me that this is false. He who endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Study the show. During the time of Jacob's trouble. And look at that. Show yourself approved, man. 
I and he know. said it right there. Here, I, I, I was a little too. Okay. All lies. And God revealed to me that this is false. He who endures the end, the same shall be saved. Study to show yourself approved, man. All right, number Yeah. Four. Approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, which this young man is not. And you see what happens, people? This is what happens when you don't rightly divide the word of truth. You become Mark the mess. Okay? Th this man is a mess. Oh. Okay, let's get, let's wrap this up. Hi. This will kind of be uh, linked to number one. Is grace is a license of sin. You know, people just use grace, grace, grace. But the Bible says that if you abuse the spirit of grace. We've already, we've already covered Hebrews chapter 10. Okay, that teaches that you can't get your salvation back. But he's teaching, yes, he is, that you can get your salvation back, that you're not eternally secure. He, he, this guy's a mess. Okay, and about the grace of license to sin, uh, there will be in the description box uh, a, a video about Romans chapter 6. We go over all of that, okay? All right, and those who are gods who live in sin and won't repent of it, he will kill them, okay? We've already addressed this, okay? Uh, I'll leave that verse right here. It's in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 to 29. You know, we're not called to abuse the spirit of grace. So yes, we have grace, so when we sin, we're not gonna we're not you know gonna go into hell. But if, if you abuse it, if you abuse the spirit of grace, you know, there's no more sacrifice for sin. So this is the one thing that <laughs> That's for another dispensation. Oh. Oh. When I was first cut new to the walk, like, oh I, I can still smoke, I can still fornicate, I can still watch porn, masturbate, you know, I can still do that, right? Because I, I have grace. But no, 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 no. You don't wanna believe in that lie. That lie is sending many people to hell. You no, no, you don't do that because you will lose rewards. If you're saved of the church of the living God um, and you continue in those things, God will kill you. You're bringing shame onto our Lord Jesus Christ. Those sins will not keep you from hell if you are truly, or not keep you from heaven, excuse me. Uh, those will not keep you from heaven if you are truly saved. You will bring shame upon our Lord Jesus Christ. You will shame his name. He will be ashamed of you for eternity. And ultimately, he will end up killing you. Okay? Okay? Yes. You lose much. You lose much. Especially the honor of our Lord. Okay? But it doesn't mean you lose your salvation. Again, Romans chapter 6 expository study will be in this uh, description box. Please watch it if you have any questions. Those false, that false teaching... That grace, grace, grace is abusing that grace. Guys, you don't want to fall into that, man. So yeah, that's, that's, I guess, that's linked to number one, too, once I know what I said. Number six would be pagan holidays. This is true. What do the Christianity church celebrate? They celebrate Christmas. They say that Christmas is Jesus' birthday. And it no isn't. No the Bible doesn't mention that. It's no, it all doesn't. these holidays, Christmas, Easter. Uh, I'm Start just doing day. For, I'm just doing this to celebrate Christ. You're supposed to be celebrating Passover. That's the biblical of Easter, you know Passover was a holiday, a holy day, excuse me, that was given unto the Jews for remembrance unto the Jews. The like unto us today is the Lord's Supper, a time of remembrance for what the Lord did unto them. That is a holy day for the Jewish people. We are, we are not required, Jew and Gentile, we are not required to keep the Passover today salvithically. Example, if you're a Jew, a true Hebrew, a true Jew, this young man is not, okay, uh, and you want to keep the Passover, I believe you should, yes. Will you be in danger of losing your salvation if you don't? No, no, okay, no. Passover, yes, is a true scriptural holy day, yes, but it is a holy day for the Jews. Now, I and my wife have been to several Passover Seder dinners, yes, and we use that for ourselves as the church of God to remember how the Lord brought us out of our lost life and is leading us onto the promised land, heaven unto himself. Yes, yes, but it is not a requirement to stay saved or be saved or be right with God, no. Okay, if you're an actual Hebrew Jew, yes, I believe you should uh, keep the Passover. Absolutely, but it is not a requirement. Okay, it's not a requirement. But as far as he is saying, as far as these holy days like uh, Christ Mass, Compound Word, and uh, Astarte, Ishtar, uh, Easter, 
Why were the people who call saved people lost for speaking against the Helliday Christ Mass, why weren't they so up in arms over Easter? Why weren't they so scripturally, you know, hey, Easter, the day when he rose from the dead, right? Right? Why weren't they so adamant about Easter as they are Christ Mass? Because that would give away who they were really for, working for, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. But yes, totally. He's, and he's speaking truth here about pagan holidays. Absolutely. Uh, even though Easter is a, is a false uh, god. Okay, you got, yes. Do research, guys. Do research. Yeah. Halloween. What do they do on Halloween? They dress up like demons and witches. It's, it's evil. It's darkness. But this is what they this is what they celebrate in the Christian church. Now, now I know not all Christian church, Christianity churches do that. But most of them do. All right. And uh, like I said, do your research, guys. Christmas is not... Jesus' birthday. No one in the Bible doesn't mention Jesus' yes. birthday. This is all just pagan holidays. Yes. Easter, Christmas, Halloween. Yep. You know, um, you know the eggs. Guys, it's called. Uh, it's, I hope I'm saying it right. Uh, Ishtar. 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 Do your research, man. Start. I'll leave a post right here. If you have him on Instagram, Mark the Messenger. I'm always exposing these pagan holidays. So yeah. All right. So yeah, the pagan holidays. You don't want to celebrate it. Um, God, Bible even says that He hates your feast days. All right, I'll leave a verse right here. So God is not happy with us when we celebrate pagan holidays, man. Again, taking and that out of context, but what he's talking about about pagan holidays is real. true. Rest, rest, everyone just rest in peace. All right, everyone, and, 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 and people believe that, guys. People really believe that hell is not a, like, a real place. It's like, wait, do you actually read? Yes, hell is a real place. And you read about that in Mark chapter 9. Okay? Mark chapter 9. Okay, you read about that, Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, yes, hell is a real place. And yes, there are those Christians out there who don't want to, um, uh, who don't want to believe. And I know that there are some out there who's um, soul annihilationism, that your soul will be annihilated, that you won't suffer forever. Yes, but see, he doesn't, this young man doesn't give the scripture, okay? Mark chapter 9, verses 43 on to verse 50. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell. Where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. For every one shall be salted with fire. And every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. Salt is good. But if the salt have lost his saltiness, wherewith shall it well, wherewith will ye season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. But, but yes, absolutely. Hell is a real place. Absolutely. In the Bible. Okay. Now hell was guys, hell wasn't created for us. Yes, hell was, hell was created for the devil and his angels. Yes. Was created for the Satan and the fallen angels, but people are willfully joining hell because they're rejecting Christ. They're rejecting the true gospel. They're rejecting the true faith. All right, they're believing the lies. Or right, they want to be friends with the ungodly. Friends of the world is is friends of as enemy God, God's enemy. Friends, whoever, whoever makes himself a friend of the world is an enemy of God. All right, so hell is a real place, and we know how when everyone dies, when these celebrities die, everyone says rest in peace. But most of these celebrities, especially the A class ones, they sell their soul to Satan. So are they resting in peace? I don't I don't think they are, guys. I don't think they're resting in peace. I know they're not. Now, of course, I'm not God. I'm not the one to judge them, but the Bible says that we know a man by his fruits. So if you are serving Satan in the world, are you gonna go to heaven when you die? I don't I don't believe so, man. You know a man by his fruits. Okay. Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does my will and father shall um he who does the will of the Father. Okay. So understand this, man. People always, you know, believe that that hell, uh, hell. You really believe, Mark, people always comment to Mark. You really believe in hell? Of course I do. I believe in heaven and hell. All right. 
So I, I 100% believe in hell, man. Now, like I said, it wasn't designed for us, but people are willfully joining there. People are willfully joining Satan's army. People are willingly wanting to be evil and be demons and hate the truth. That's actually, hearing him talk about hell is making me a little sad for him. It really is. Peace and blessings. Because this young, and that, that's, that's it for that video. That's it for that video. This young man is going to hell, and to hear him talk about it is, is really sad. It's really sad. Let's finish this with 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. If this young man were truly saved, what, what, a, what an influence he could have. But he's not. And we have gone through the scriptures. If you have made it through this video, we have proved that this young man, this dear young man, is a heretic, lost, and leading people to hell. And he himself is going to hell. And that's, I don't take any pleasure in that, but our God is just. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 under verse 5. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, yeah, Incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. How is he denying the power thereof? He's saving himself by keeping the law. That is going to be it for this video. And dear young man, if you happen to see this video, I think you will. You can get a hold of me. I'm not going to get a hold of you. You can get a hold of me. Okay? I'll talk with you. Okay? I will. But be careful, all you people. I'll expose you via email, your email here on YouTube, and show people how, you know, not afraid to do that. But that is going to be it for this video, brethren. Um... This is, this is the sign of the times. This is the sign of the times. People like Mark the Messenger here and um, all the charismatics that are coming out of the woodwork. This is the sign of the times that we are living in. And it's sad. It's sad. Men are lovers of their own selves and want to worship men and pagan idolatry and stuff like that. It's sad. It's sad. But um, for those of you who follow this young man, please be aware that this man is not saved. He is teaching contrary to the scriptures, and we have proved that today in this video. Absolutely. And if you want to deny that, then uh, that's on you. So, thank you. And I hope those of you who will see this will consider this, these arguments that we have brought up today. Because there's a lot at stake. This young man is lying to you. And he is teaching contrary to the scriptures. And he is truly speaking of words to no profit. Subverting your souls. Okay, He is speaking truly words to no profit. Subverting people. So, that's going to be it for this video. Going to get this video uploaded, Lord willing. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, we love you. Church of the Living God. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you so much for all your prayers. For those of you who pray for us, thank you to those of you who still help us today. Thank you. Um, we love you. And thank you. Keep us in your prayers. Because we have to come up, or we have to make some really big decisions coming up here. And we are waiting on the Lord to see what he will have us to do. So please keep us in your prayers. We love you. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.